factoring trinomials where the coefficient of x squared is 1. So remember that a trinomial has three terms, and in this case, this would be the example of a trinomial that we're going to be working with. ax squared plus bx plus c, where a, b, and c are constants, and a is equal to 1. So before we get into the factoring part, we need to do a little exercise where you need to tell me two numbers that multiply to something and that add to something else. So we're going to look for numbers that have a certain product. That just means what do you get? How do you, what do you multiply together? A product is like two times three, that would be six. So what is the product of six? Two times three. So I'm going to write two columns here and I want you to stop the video and answer the question. Usually when I do this in class, I would say, you know, what two numbers, so this is the way it's going to go. I'm going to find two numbers, so you're filling in the blanks, that have a product of two and the very same two numbers have to add up to three. Okay, so if you know the answer, shout it out. I won't be able to hear you, but start thinking about two things that multiply to two and add to three. And you should know right away, and I'm guessing you do, that that would be like two times one is two, and two plus one is three. Okay, so that's as far as we're gonna go with this right now, but I'm going to do a whole bunch of them. So I want two numbers that multiply to negative 15, and the same two numbers have to add up to positive 2. So again, if you want to just stop, think about it before I fill in the blanks, but I'm not going to keep saying that every time I write one out. Now I'm just going to keep going. So two numbers that multiply to minus 15, but they add to a positive number. So that means that the larger number has to be positive, right? Because if I I know 5 times 3 is 15, and I know I can make a 2 out of a 5 and a 3. So if I write out 5 and 3 here, and 5 and 3 here, I think you'd know very quickly that it means that the 3 has to be the negative, right? So if this was negative and this is negative, then I would get this 2. Okay, so what are two numbers that multiply together to give you 20? And the same two numbers, has to be the same ones, add to give you negative 9. So knowing what you know about multiplication, two negatives make a positive, and two negatives added together will give you another negative number. Right? It's like I owe, I owe, so off to work I go. So this is minus 5 and minus 4. Those multiply to 20. And minus 5 plus minus 4 is going to give me minus 9. So you may think that this is a little bit of an exercise in redundancy, but it's not. Think about every one of these. Multiplies to 16 and adds to negative 10. Okay, so again this time I have, they both have to be negative to give me the positive here. Any product, you know, it has to be a negative times a negative or a positive times a positive to give you a positive product. But because the sum is negative, that means they both have to be negative. So what two numbers multiply to 16? Negative six, or positive 16, so minus two and minus eight, and those two numbers added together will give me minus 10. Okay, multiplies to give me um, negative 18, and the sum has to be positive three. Okay, so positive 3 and a negative. So one's negative, one's positive. Because my answer is positive, the larger number has to be positive. So 6 and minus 3. 6 minus 3 gives me 3. What multiplies together to give me negative 48 and adds to give me positive 2? Okay, so think of all the factors of 48. So 1 and 48, no, can't make 2. 2 and 24, no. 3 and 16, no. 4 and 21, no. It's got to be bigger. How about 8 and 6? 6 times 8 is 48. 
So I'm going to put 8 and 6 here. My sum has to be positive, so that means the larger number has to be positive. 8 and negative 6. Two numbers that multiply to give me 72. And the same two numbers have to add to negative 17. Oops, there we go. So again, we have a positive product, but a negative sum. So if it's going to be positive on this side, then it has to be two negative numbers. And minus 8 and minus 9 gives me negative 17. And we're going to do one more. Two numbers that multiply to give me 56. So this is a little brain exercise, right? And the same two numbers have to add up to give you negative 15. So again, that means two negative numbers here. And they're negative on this side to give me that negative 15. So think of the factors of 56. 8 times 7 is 56. So minus 7 and minus 8, doesn't matter which order you write them in, minus 7 plus negative 8. Okay, so now that you've got the hang, hang of finding the product and the sum, I want to bring in how does this all work with the trinomials themselves. So if I gave you a trinomial, now I'm going to make it into this format of ax squared plus bx plus c, and I'm going to say, okay, what if I had x squared plus 5x minus 36 and I asked you to factor it. So the first thing I want to know is what numbers make the product and which two numbers will make the sum. This works for the same for factoring trinomial, trinomials where the coefficient is not one. So hang on and follow along. So the first number here, let's say this is, I have a one here, right? One in front. So this is the first number. This is what I call the middle number. And this is going to be my last number. So when you're finding the product, you want the product of the first and the last. So I'm going to multiply these two numbers together to find what product I'm looking for. So 1 times negative 36 is negative 36. So the product of the first and the last, the sum of the one in the middle. I made a little poem for my class many, many years ago. So I want a sum of five. Okay, so now that you know what two numbers you're looking for, so I'm going to write that out. I'm going to say product of the first and the last, the sum of the one in the middle. Okay, this poem's gonna get longer. Okay, so now I'm going to write out, just like I did up here, product sum, product sum. So my product, I want two numbers that multiply to give me negative 36, and the same two numbers are going to add to five. Okay, so I don't know if we did that one up here. No, we didn't. Okay, so I want 5 and minus 36. So one of them is negative, one is positive. The larger one is going to be positive. So factors of 36, 9 and 4. The 9 and a 4, I can make a 5. So I'm going to put 9 and minus 4 because 9 plus minus 4 is going to give me 5. Okay, so... The product of the first and the last is the sum of the one in the middle. Find the two numbers that match the above. Take your time, continue to fiddle, because nothing rhymes with middle. Okay, so once you've done it for, for these special um, trinomials where the coefficient is only one, all you have to do is make two brackets and I'm going to put an X in the first position here. And I'm going to use these special numbers and put them right into the bracket, just the way they are. So I'm going to say X plus 9 and X minus 4. And I'm done. That's how easy factoring is when the coefficient is only 1. All you have to do is take these two special numbers 
that you're really good at finding now, product sum, and plug them in here. So look when I expand. x times x is x squared. Then minus 4x plus 9x gives me the 5, and 9 times minus 4 is minus 36. That was pretty easy, wasn't it? Okay, let's do a few more to make sure you've got this all straight in your mind. Okay, let's do, um, let's do x squared plus 2x minus 48. Now you should know right now that there are some times when you can't factor a trinomial. They're not all factorable. And we're going to learn another operation called the quadratic formula in order to solve for the equations later on. Don't worry about it for now. Right now we're doing these nice basic factoring. So what is my product and what is my sum? So remember the product is the first times the last. So again, I know there's only a one here and you're saying, well, why doesn't you just say the last? Because when there is a number here, you're going to multiply those two together to get the product. So right now it's just minus 48 and my sum of the one in the middle the one in the middle is a two. Okay, so now I'm going to write out my little, I'm gonna put it over here. This times this equals minus 48, and the same two numbers give me two. Now whatever you do, don't write that under here, okay? This is where you're gonna say this equals, and you're going to have two sets of brackets. So don't, this is like doing this on the side. Okay, two numbers that multiply to negative 48 and add to positive 2. So again, we've got a positive sum, so one positive, one negative, and the larger one is going to have to be positive. So 6 times 8 is 48, 6 times, or 8 times negative 6 is negative 48, and 8 plus negative 6 is 2. So all you have to do again, now we've got these two special numbers, 8 and minus 6, don't even need these ones anymore, okay? And I've seen some people try to do something with that, but we're just gonna put them right into the brackets here, eight, or x plus eight, and x minus six. And there you go. Now, I'm going to do one more, because I think basically you've got the whole, or maybe I'll do two more. You've got the idea of product sum, product sum. And the other thing, in the last lesson when we did, um, when we did common factoring, I told you that sometimes you need to take out a common factor first. You always look for a common factor. So can you tell me what the common factor would be in this trinomial? Always look for a common factor. So you should know at this point in the game, your teacher is not going to ask you to factor a cubic function. You're only doing quadratics. Quadratics have a degree of two. So if you look here, there is a common factor, and it is x. Every term has an x. So you pull out an x first. So I'm just gonna put it in a bracket like this. You don't need the bracket, but just to keep it nice and neat. And I divide each one. I take one x away from each of them. Okay, so now I go to my product sum product of the first and the last. So this, you don't have to worry about it anymore. You have to keep it in your equation here. This equals, because if I didn't put the x here, um, obviously this cubic function is not equal to this quadratic function, cubic meaning degree of three, and this has a degree of two. So you need to keep this in the equation as you write out your solution. But I'm only factoring this part now. So I'm going to make two sets of brackets and I'm going to find a product that is 1 times minus 48. Oh look, it's the same as the one above. And a sum of 2. And we already know what those are because we just did them here. Okay, so I have 8 and minus 6 and I just plug them in here. x plus 8, x minus 6. Okay, let's do one that we haven't already done. Um, 7x squared plus 28x minus 147. Holy smoke, 147. Okay, so obviously this isn't a trinomial with a coefficient of one. 
So that's a little clue to you that you need to take out a common factor. So the common factor here is, tell me, can you tell me, shut it out, shut it out. Common factor is seven, the number seven. So we're going to pull out a seven first, factor out a seven, so I put seven here, make a bracket and divide every term by seven. So I get four X minus 21. Okay, so now I'm all set. I wanna know the product and the sum that I'm looking for. The product that I'm looking for is one times minus 21 is minus 21. The sum of the one in the middle, four. So the product of the first and the last sum of the one in the middle, find the two numbers that match the above, take your time, continue to fiddle. Okay, so let's put that in here. What two numbers multiply to negative 21 and add to four? So you know seven times three is 21, so I'm gonna put those in first, seven and three, and then I'm going to do the little thinking part about how do I get a positive four and a negative product. So I picked seven and three because I knew I could make a four out of those by just subtracting that three. So seven minus three gives me positive four, and seven times minus three is minus 21. So now all I have to do is make my two sets of brackets. I put X in the first position, X in the first position, and I put in these two numbers. So X plus seven and X minus three. And there you go. So this homework you should be working on, there's a whole bunch in this wonderful book called Math Power 10 that is accessible online as a download. And I, I put the link every time I've done one of these lessons. And there's a whole bunch of practice on page 156, 157 to make you really good at factoring trinomials. And again, I want you to think about the fact that sometimes questions are not factorable. You won't be able to find two numbers that multiply to something and add to something else. It's just the way of the world. And we'll discuss that later when we get into um, more work with quadratics. Okay, so that's your lesson on factoring trinomials where the coefficient of x squared is 1. Next lesson, we'll switch that up.